Hi everyone, my name is Matt and I'm the community manager of Railroader and I'm here with Adam, the creator and lead developer. Hi everyone. The video you're watching now was shot during a four player session on the alpha build of Railroader, profiling the crew of a mixed train as they go about their day. We'll be uploading the full session with both the engineer and the conductor's viewpoints in a separate video. Now over on the Discord, we polled for a bunch of your questions and uh, here are the best ones. So, uh, down to basics, Adam. Uh, what's the game about? Where and when are we talking? So yeah, Railroader is like a, it's a cooperative, multiplayer, and single player railroad simulator. A lot of, a lot of words in here. It's set in a short line in transition era Appalachia, uh, sometime in the like 1940s to 1950s. And, um, you know, as far as like what you do in the game, you're, you're running freight and passenger trains, you're switching cars, you got your pickups, your setouts switch lists uh, and I think like one of our questions of course I, I have seen the questions is uh, you know, they asked what's the vibe of the game which I think was a, a great question uh, and I'd say that like the vibe is uh, like relaxed and accessible but not necessarily casual if that makes okay. sense okay so we're talking transition era so we have a lot of potential here yeah I, I like I think it's um, you know, a lot of people have their different ideas about like what's the what are the best railroading years, but um, you know, I'm, and I'm getting into some of the other other topics. But like, I think that transition was such a great time because you still had steam, you had diesel coming on the scene, um, and it's just a you know it's just a real neat time in railroading, and that's the time that we're uh, we're focused on. Awesome. So, what was your reasoning for actually starting the project itself? Yeah, so a number of years ago, I got into model railroad operations, and some of you may not be familiar, but it's this great subculture of model railroading where uh, people get together, usually in somebody's basement, you know, with other people that love trains, and they run a model railroad as if it were a real railroad. Uh, so you have like crews and maybe a dispatcher and um, all kinds of stuff. So, I, and I wanted something like that in a train simulator. Um, and there are things that kind of get maybe close to that, but nothing really did what I wanted, particularly with steam trains. So one of the other things that I felt like was missing and what was available at the time was, was player agency. And like, so to me, that's like letting the player decide how they want to do things, where the game doesn't really lead you through a linear thing. It lets you, it kind of gives you the problem and lets you solve it, right? Uh, so that's been one of our core principles in how the game is designed. Yeah, there, there is some structure for you. It is a game. But uh, in large part, it's up to you to decide how you want to run the railroad. Yeah, great. Now, um, a, a big question on a lot of people's mind is, wh where are we in development? What's the current state? The game is uh, it's at a really interesting point right now. Um, and so why do I say that? I say that because... It's completely playable in multiplayer. It's very stable. Uh, we've been alpha testing it for, I can't believe this, over a year now. Um, we've got like a number of locomotives, you know, freight and passenger cars, as you've seen in the screenshots and some of the other videos we've done. Um, and we're testing it on a map that has a 13 mile main line and it's loosely based on a portion of the Murphy Branch in North Carolina, Western North Carolina. Uh, so pretty mountainous, um, really great region. So, um, so some of you out there might be wondering, well, if it's so playable, why haven't you put it out in early access yet? And uh, you know, I think that as I'm as I'm thinking about my responses to these questions, uh, the simple answer there though is that we don't think that early access is the most healthy path for the game, uh, even though it's playable right now. We have a lot that we still want to add to it, a lot that we want to refine, we have bugs to fix, and and those things take time. Right, right. So are you actually able to share with us what you're working on at the time of this video? Yeah, right now I'm working with Elijah, who is our lead modeler, on rebuilding how the game loads the assets that go into it, so things like those those locomotives. Um, and the idea there is to make me, because I'm kind of the, the sole uh, uh, programmer on the project, to make me less of a bottleneck. 
So once we get that in good shape, uh, I'm looking forward to building out more of the simulation mechanics, uh, things like uh, adjusting how the industries work, looking at wear and maintenance, uh, and those kind of things. Oh, and uh, before we get into like, further questions, I wanted to add, um, and this is me addressing you, the listeners, uh, you know, we want to tell you all, all about the game, but we're also really committed to giving you an accurate picture of what to expect. And the downside of that is that means that we can't fully answer some of these questions yet. Uh, there were some great questions that we got that get into things that we're just not ready to talk about yet. And uh, you know, I, I think that we'll get there, but it's going to take some time. So you know, along with that, we're also refining the game design as we play, we're iterating on it. And sometimes that leads to changing our plans uh, to improve the overall game. And that's all part of the development process. So, um, you know, that's just kind of my... Um, asterisks as we get going here like th there are probably going to be some things that we talk about that change and um, that's just you know that's uh, that's a good thing like that means that we are we're improving the game and, and a lot of times it's hard from the outside looking in I think to understand the reasons behind decisions but um, because things may seem simple but they're actually connected to a lot of other things a lot of other considerations in the game so, okay, that's enough about that. Uh, next question, please. Right, so getting into the, the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, one of the largest categories of questions we had was about different locomotives. So how diverse is the roster going to be? And uh, what locomotives are we looking at uh, coming to the game? Yeah, this is something that um, we put a lot, a lot of work into this. Uh, and it's something we're actually we're still working on it right now in terms of planning out uh, that roster and there's a lot of work left to go uh, so we're selecting locomotives that are appropriate to the location of the game appalachia um, you know, short line uh, as well as the um, the time period uh, 40s to 50s so uh, as a player like i th it's so hard to know how to how to phrase these things, but like you should expect a little bit of everything, um, not everything, not you know not not the really big stuff, but a lot of a lot of stuff. So switchers, your moguls, Mikados, um, maybe some logging locomotives. Um, you know, I don't want, like I'm trying not to say big boy because there is oh, no, no there's no big boy there's no big boy coming to the game. I'm sorry. I know you're crushed, Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so no big boys. Um, but there is some larger stuff, and I know there's been some feedback that you know that we've gotten that uh, you know some people look at that and, and some of those larger locomotives, and they're like, well, I don't know about that running. Um, but that's kind of the great thing about this game, I think, is that if you don't want to run that, then you don't don't run that, and you're fine. Um, but if you do want to run some of those larger things, some of those are going to be available to you. So I, I think we're trying to, I don't want to say that we're trying to please everybody, but we're trying to make sure that there's a, um, a nice range of, of different motive power for people to, to choose from. So, um, you know, we're asking about the roster, right? And this gets back to what I was speaking about in the previous question. I'd love to be able to tell you exactly you know, like what, this is what we're thinking, this might change, this might not, but uh, it's just too early to be able to share that kind of stuff. Um, and I know that's frustrating to, frustrating to hear, but uh, for our team, it's critical that we deliver what we promise. So we're not just, we're not quite ready to promise those things yet. We'll get there. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> now, how do you acquire new locomotives within the game? All right, this one's easy. So uh, this one, all right, so to get new locomotives, you order locomotives from, uh, from the builder, you know, basically using money that you've earned from serving your customers, from running those passenger trains, from uh, switching those industries. All right. And this has been a, a question on everyone's mind. I think uh, <laughs> narrow gauge, what are your plans on that? Uh, like like the big boy, there are no current plans 
for narrow gauge in railroader. Sorry. I mean, it's just a matter, nothing, narrow gauge is great, but it's just a matter of focus. Like so many of these decisions are about uh, focusing so that we can actually get something to ship. Right. And you did mention we're working in in the transition era. So do we have any uh, diesel plans uh, in regards to what's coming? Yeah, we, we um, we do have two diesel locomotives right now. Um, we have an SW1 and a Jeep 9, and I don't mind sharing those. Um, and I hope that that roster will grow in the future, but I, I expect us, really, I expect us to focus more on steam for Railroader 1.0. Um, and, th- you know, after that, then I think that um, we'll be able to reevaluate and see what, see what makes sense then. All right, and this is a very specific question, this next one, but will the bells be animated? Yes. Yes, the bells, where appropriate, uh, will be animated. They are animated now, actually, on um, uh, practically everything that um, uh, that makes sense for it. And we also have like a lot of animations on, um, on cars, like the boxcar doors, uh, some of the hatches you can open. So, um, yeah... I, uh, Elijah and, and other people on the team are really great about um, uh, including those animations in there. All right. Now, we get a lot of, of questions about customization in the Discord especially. Uh, what should players be expecting in terms of customizing their rolling stock? Yeah, this is um, like, yeah, this is a lot here, right? Deep topic um, and, and a lot of great ideas for it. And this is one of those areas where there's so much we want to do, only so much time. Uh, so we're really needing to to prioritize and start and try to stay realistic. So uh, for 1.0, our plan is to offer uh, basic customization of the lettering on the equipment that's owned by the players' railroads. So that's things like locomotive cabs, tenders, coaches, caboose, cabise. And um, so you'll also be able to set road numbers on those. That's like the baseline of what we're shooting for. Um, and yeah, so you'd be able to, in the game, you can set your own uh, railroad name and your reporting mark, and those can show up there. Um, and I think that we'll have it such that, you know, if, you're, um, if your railroad name is quite long and maybe you want to do like certain animations on smaller tenders, let's say, uh, that you'd have an option to specifically edit those. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was pretty good. Let's move on to some of our gameplay aspects. Uh, can we have more than one company uh, in a server? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's only one railroad company, uh, and everybody's a part of that company. And that's because the game is a, is a cooperative game. Uh, a lot of that's, like, kind of getting into, I could go down a whole uh, rabbit hole here of... Um, of you know design considerations but um but yeah there's one railroad company uh, everybody in the server uh, is a part of that company or in the, everybody in the game right all right well I, I know that the locomotives are controllable from various points outside of the cab with uh the current ui but at some points will uh whistles and horns still be quillable or is that just kind of an on off key bind yeah, so this is a good, a good question here. Um, uh, the um, and, and to add like a tiny bit of background to it, like in the game there are t- there are basically two different cameras. There's the first person camera, which is your character's point of view walking around, and then there's the the other camera is kind of your overhead camera uh, that can fly around and you can use it to like look at your switching moves and such. Uh, and the issue is that like in first person. You can just reach out, well, you know, use your mouse to um, to drag on the uh, the whistle cord, right? And then you can quill the whistle. But when you're outside the cab, you can't really do that. Uh, so right now, the way that this works is that the H key will uh, blow the whistle or the horn. Uh, but if you hold Shift H, it'll blow it harder, right? It pulls it down all the way. Um, so this is pretty good, I think. It's it's something that. I still want to um, con- continue to improve upon. Uh, it may be something like an on-screen slider. Uh, and I know this is important, like because you know I feel this. I'm sure you feel this, Matt. Like 
uh, we all kind of take some pride in how we play the whistle while we, um, you know, while we're coming through town, especially when we're coming through town because there are people around and they can they can hear you and they're judging your whistle playing, aren't they? <laughs> you can't see, <laughs> but I have a big grin on my face with that one. <laughs> now, are, are there any plans for an in-game chat and voice chat? Uh, if, if there are, is the voice chat always local or is there something global by using radios or long-range communications yeah right now in the game uh there, there's like a, a text chat that's built in uh you know like like zillions of other games you can um you can type some stuff in and everybody will see it uh, when we test the game we're using discord voice chat for those sessions it has its pros and cons um so you know i'd say that we're kind of um, we're interested in supporting some form of in-game voice, but this is one of those areas where I'm going to need to say, like, I we don't really know what's going to happen there. Like, it, this may end up being like a post 1.0 thing. So, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on this one. All right. Now, will there be any form of fast travel to allow players to move around the map without clogging the right of way? Let me, that's a good one, and, and I, I wanted to add uh, one more bit on that last one, um, which is like I think there's a great opportunity there to, you know, because in, in some sessions like that we've had, and I, many many other people playing other games have had, you want to be able to talk to the dispatcher sometimes, and sometimes you want to just talk to your your train crew that's standing around you. So um, I, that's why I think like in-game voice is it could be a lot more powerful than Discord. It's just the question of the cost, uh, if you will, in time in terms of time to develop that. Uh, okay, so yeah, for fast travel. Um, so yeah, you can teleport uh, to anywhere on the map. Uh, you can also run inhumanly quickly if you choose to. Uh, you can also just walk. So um, you know, this is like this is one of those areas where I think it's right to make compromises. In reality like we try to make many many things close to reality in the game but this is one of those areas where I just I personally don't think it serves the game to um, force you to, to uh, walk at a realistic pace all the time because uh, trains are really big and uh, it, it's it's really kind of annoying to um, to have to to have to contend with that in a game setting sometime so um, you know, and some people won't want to play that way. Some people won't want to allow uh, teleporting. Um, uh, and so we've had some interesting discussions, like on the Discord server, about maybe a game server setting to limit teleporting and running, perhaps. So, yeah, I, I think there's some um, possibilities there, and, and it wouldn't be too, um, too involved to add that. But, yeah, you can, there is fast travel. <laughs> yeah, great. Um... How do you plan on actually handing, handling the jobs? Um, are we looking at a contract system similar to some other games, or do you have something different in mind? Yeah, we wanted to... Um, so this is one of those, like, um, you know, player agency comes to mind again, but also uh, we, wanted to, we wanted something that was similar to how trains work with their customers in reality. So, like, in Railroader, there aren't, there aren't like, quote-unquote, jobs... Um, but rather, you establish a long-term contract with specific industries. Uh, so this provides an opportunity for um, for progression in the game. Uh, but it also is nice in that it lets you uh, control the volume and the flavor, if you will, of the work that you want to do in the game. So uh, suppose that you want to do like a logging-focused playthrough of the game. You could choose to only establish contracts uh, with say the sawmill and the logging camp or maybe if you want like a, a mixed train daily sort of thing you could only establish contracts with uh, like the industries that are directly in town so i i think so that's that's how we envision handling um work in the, in the game it's like it's done through arrangements with the or contracts with the industries and uh through setting that contract that determines what kind of cars come in from the class one on the interchange 
and that determines you know what your work is to do so um this is where it becomes you know it's kind of that player ag agency thing again of now you can decide what are the jobs that we need to to serve this because uh, we may know how we like to play the game, but you may like to play it, you know, totally differently. And um, so, yeah, I think I think this works. I think this works really well. A good like a good combination of of um, reality and or real. What how do I say that? Uh, it's realistic kind of, um, you know, relationships with customers, but it's also giving you that freedom to figure out how you want to play and how it works best for you. All right. Uh, will we be able to use like line side de detonators for warning multiplayer crews in dark territories? So like torpedoes. I would love to add torpedoes. <laughs> uh, I don't. I, yeah, so I would love to add torpedoes. I don't know. I don't know for sure whether it'll make it in. These are the worst. These are the hardest features because it's like I really want that, but um, but priorities, Adam. So. Uh, like infusies come to mind as another feature. It's like, um, you know, not strictly necessary, but boy, would that be fun to uh, toss one down, um, or maybe a, several thousand. Not, actually, <laughs> the game will not support. Let me, I'll go on the record. The game will not support throwing down thousands of fusies. Okay, so um, yeah, so yeah, we'll. we'll I guess that's a very long way of saying like we'll have to see. But yeah, this is one of those features that I'd. I'd love to add. Oh, because everyone loves a small explosion. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need... <laughs> You've got to have explosions in your train game, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's move on to the map and uh, industry questions. Okay. So what kind of industries do we have and how many industries do we have at, at this point? Yeah, right now, the test map has... Uh, 12 industries and uh, I think it's five yeah five passenger stops uh, and the industries are all based on what would be plausible for this region so you have like uh, coal and fuel dealers sawmill logging camp I already mentioned uh, there's a, a small coal mine uh, like uh, at the larger towns there are house tracks um, so th things along those lines um, and uh, I'd expect us to add a few more of those uh, before we ship, like a few more industries. It seems to add a lot of operations interest in there, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, you want you want to have a lot of different um, you you want to have a lot of different options, and and so some days some days you serve so and so, and some days you don't, and so yeah, good to, good to have options there. Now, if you decide to implement a custom map system. Will you aim to implement uh, a route laying system similar to some other games in the market? Or are you thinking a separate editor? Mm. Yeah, so like like player editable track, in other words, right? Yeah. Whether, whether it's in like live in-game or uh, within an editor. Um, yeah, this is a tough one. Like it, it pains me to say it, but we have no current plans to... Um, release a map editor or for player editable track i would love to but we actually we have to actually finish this game and ship <laughs> it at some point and those are like those are those features that are like ah uh, that would be so cool to have but um we, we just can't commit to that to 1.0 because it's it's such a big uh big item now like, I think we will absolutely reevaluate re that once 1.0 is out the door. So we'll see. All right. Um, what's the player experience like at the industry? Uh, when you drop a car off, like, what happens? Do you need to load it yourself, or is there another way that happens? Yeah, right now, all you need to do is, uh, is to get the car spotted and stopped, basically. Like, <laughs> it can't be rolling. Um, and you know, the thinking there is that um, you know our railroaders, our players, you're busy enough running the trains. Like the customer has their own people that they're paying to load and unload their cars. Gotcha. So let's move on to the the simulation aspect of the game. 
So how in-depth is the locomotive simulation at this point? Is there firing? Do we have support for a three-man crew? Mm. Simulation is one of those things where there's practically no limit to how far you can go, right? Like, um, you know, how, how, like how deep does the simulation need to be? I, so, it, and as a train game, it's, there no, it's no question it's an important part of the game. But it's not the most important part of, of this particular game. Uh, like Railroader aims to be engaging, and this is kind of like um, I, I, I cribbed this from my from my notes on Game Vision. I wrote, uh, Railroader aims to be engaging and pleasingly realistic to a player who is knowledgeable about train operations. So, um, you know, at the beginning of our, our little show here, I, I said it's a railroad simulator. I didn't call it a train simulator. And that's kind of why, because, um, you know, clearly it needs to be realistic enough to people who know about trains to be able to enjoy it. Um, you know, that's absolutely what we want to do. Um, but it, it does not need to be, you know, I think if, if we um, if we spent that time and energy in, um you know, building out full realism, this game would be so hard to play because you'd have to, you'd have to be contending with all of that realism uh, in combination with also switching cars. And I know some of you are hearing this and saying, yes, please, but I'm sorry, this is not that game right now. So, you know, the focus is on, is on that bigger picture stuff. Um, but so, so there's that. Um, so I will say our train movement simulation is really, really good, I think. Uh, there's slack action, wheel slip, uh, fully simulated brake line, reservoirs, and brake cylinders. And um, the steam locomotive simulation is pretty good, but still improving. Um, you know, we're fortunate to have some people on our team with a lot of experience running real steam locomotives, and they've been helping to guide the game here and give a lot of feedback. And that's been really valuable to us. Um, on the question of the three-man crew or three-person crew and firing, uh, right now there's no firing. There's a seat there. You could sit there and, um, you know, if, if, <laughs> if sitting is pleasing, uh, you know, have at it. Um, I sometimes do. But, um, yeah, so there's no firing at, at the moment. Um, as for whether there will be firing in 1.0, I'm really not sure. Like, this is one of those... Another one of those tough ones. Uh, if we do add firing, it'll have to have some form of AI fireman, you know, or automatic fireman, because, like I was saying before, uh, you know, with how difficult the game would be, like in single player, sometimes it's a bit much to just be um, engineer and conductor at the same time. You're like, you know, managing angle cocks and, um, you know, trying to like trying to pull off a. Um, um, a flying switch or something like that as a single player is uh, is not easy. So um, so those are some of the considerations there. It's it's absolutely something that's on our mind, but I don't know yet whether that's a 1.0 thing or not. All right. Now uh, let's move on to derailments and when things go wrong in general. <laughs> um, are there derailment physics in the game and if so are they more similar to uh, other games or are we expecting some sort of you failed screen and what kind of equipment failures should we expect uh, will there be maintenance mm -hmm. yeah so right now right now at this very moment there are no derailments in the game um, and we should have paced these out. Here's another one. Like, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can do it. So, but you know, much like firing uh, derailments or something that we're thinking about, and it's it's another one of those features, even more than firing, that raises other questions about, you know, like, well, if you derail, well, then what? How do you how do you fix that? Uh, so, you know, I I kind of take those take those things pretty seriously and and I want to make sure that we have good answers to them and that we don't just tack on derailing and then you pay a thousand dollars or something to fix it like I don't think that's a good uh, 
not to be catty, but I don't think that's a, like a great gameplay experience. So yeah, derailments don't know. Um, as far as uh, equipment failures and maintenance, um, we don't have all this ironed out yet, but I think we have a better, much better idea than derailments. Uh, we're planning on implementing wear and tear for locomotives uh, and possibly other rolling stock. Uh, I don't think that you would see things like catastrophic failures, like a boiler explosion, let's say, um, <laughs> you know, or, or you know, blowing the uh, piston cap off. But you know, what you might see is wear caused by excessive use, um, causing a loss of efficiency, maybe, or poor brake performance. So I think there's some good options for us there. Uh, and then for the maintenance side of things, I think it needs to be you know relatively simple at least to start with um you know something like you take the engine to the roundhouse and flag it for repairs and those repairs maybe take place over a period of time and then your engine's uh good as you know good as new or whatever um so yeah that's what we're thinking there all right well let's move on to a little bit more of the, the game world questions um will there be anything like procedural generated weather or 24 hour day night cycles yeah there actually are or is is there is weather right now in the game um that's configurable so there's like a um you can kind of set whether it's sunny or cloudy that kind of thing rainy um but it is purely aesthetic so it doesn't have at the moment like it doesn't really impact anything um and there is a day and night cycle um and there's a fast clock on that uh, day night cycle uh, which is configurable and the re like so fast clocks uh, if you're not familiar out there in uh, radio land youtube land um, fast clocks are, are usually used on model railroads because the model railroad is dramatically smaller than the real railroad right <laughs> um, in our case that's not really the case like th these are um, you know it's a, it's a 13 mile long run like you have time in between towns to think about things so um so why would you have a fast clock um part of it is in order to just to be able to see the lighting change it, it, like it looks nice it's pleasing to to feel the passage of time uh and also it's um it's helpful for like if you want to be able to um you know see more cars coming in and, and have cars turning over faster otherwise the game uh, which is intended to be played over a, a relatively long period of time like you would maybe play a, a sing, single save for uh you know weeks or months but perhaps um uh, so it's that that passage of time made faster uh makes your time in the game a bit more uh, active let's say so yeah all right i you did mention uh, rain and you said the weather currently was purely aesthetic but do you have any plans to make poor weather have an adverse effect on locomotives yeah this makes this makes a lot of sense um, and I see this as a um, like a this is another one of those like probably a post 1.0 feature but uh, because then it um, you know, it touches other things, and it requires uh, sand, which at the moment uh, doesn't exist in the game. Like, there's no, uh, there's no sanding system. So, um, you know, those are things that we need to think through. For example, like if we add sand, um, and I'm actually taking this from our conversation earlier, Matt. Credit to Matt here. If we added sand, then you have to have, you'd probably want a way to refill sand, right? And so, uh, you know, then we need, um, we need a way for that to happen. So. Um, this is something it's on our mind, but it, it may end up being a, a post 1.0 thing. All right, that sounds good. So, so going to release now, we've had a lot of questions regarding cost, uh, release date. Is there going to be a demo? Do you have any input on that? Yeah, so the release date that we're shooting for, or the release time that we're shooting for is, quote, early 2023, close quote. Um, and so that's still a ways off. And so because of that, it's, it's much too early for us to talk about uh, cost of the game. Um, um, 
And, and I'll add, like, um, at this time, we don't have any plans for a demo or early access or anything like that. Our plan is to, um, you know, release a quality product. And um, so it's possible, uh, you know, hopefully through listening, you've gotten a sense that the uh, quality of this thing is quite important to us. And so, uh, you know, if we need to ship, the, sorry, if we need to slip the release date, to to be releasing a quality product then uh, we will do that but um i hope that we do not like nobody ever wants to miss their uh, miss their target date so yeah again early 2023 and i know that's an ambiguous time and that's on purpose because this is a complicated game and we want to get it right that's that's important to us so this is a question i've seen a little bit on the discord server uh, will you sell rolling stock and locomotives as DLC or will everything be free or come with the game? Uh, basically, what's the team's plans for microtransactions or DLC? Yeah, we have no plans for DLC at this time. We're focused on releasing Railroader and we plan to include a lot of content in that one purchase. And that's what I'd want as a customer and that's the model that I think most of our customers want. I'm sure that'll make a lot of people happy to hear that. Yeah. Now, um, I think we mentioned it earlier, but I, I want to get a definitive answer. Um, Steam Workshop support, do you have plans for that? Yeah, we do plan to do um, Steam Workshop uh, and you know, third-party content. Um, you know, like specifically things like um, uh, Rolling Stock and Locomotives. Uh, but this is like squarely in the post 1.0 world. Um, so not not something for the 1.0 release, something we're going to be focusing on later. Uh, we're doing some, uh, you know, groundwork. Maybe I'm saying too much groundwork for it right now, just to make sure that we, uh, we're building something that can support that in the future. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the plan. Because, yeah, I think that's really important to... Um, because um, you know we're only so many people, and uh, I think I know people are going to want to put things in the game that uh, we never thought of. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I think that'll be great. All right, Adam, that seems to be the end of my list here. I want to thank you for joining us today. Well, my pleasure. Thank you, Matt, and thanks uh, to everyone for their uh, for all the great questions that they wrote in with. Yes, indeed. Thanks, everyone. Um, link down below we have our discord we post some screenshots of game in there and uh, leave us a comment and let us know what you thought of the video or what format you'd like to see for the next one yep all right everyone we'll talk to you later